we started the land clearing process in fall of 2020. The equipment we used to prepare the worksite area was a John Deere 450K dozer and also a New Holland 232 track skid steer with a grapple bucket. Once we got the worksite area clear of debris and brush, we hauled in several tracks of loads of reclaimed asphalt. We committed to a contractor that was willing to start January of 2021, so we did a little layout here so they knew where to put the building in reference to the pad. Shortly after that, material started arriving. One of our first challenges we had to overcome was getting this truck back to the worksite area. It was approximately 600 feet off the main road. And with the building being 60 foot wide with one foot overhangs, these trusses were 62 feet long. So we had to navigate this truck, get him turned around, back him up the road so he can swing in through the access road, getting it all the way back to the building. Luckily, I had help from two friends that day. Glenn and Mike both were able to help me guide this guy up the road, backing him through the traffic without causing any issues. Once we got the truck navigated past the building and past the telephone pole, it was pretty smooth selling getting back to the worksite area. We spun him around and got him facing in the right direction. Once the trusses were delivered, there was additional three other loads that came that had other building materials such as posts and two by fours and insulation. Also, there was a separate truck came with just metal. Right before they came and drilled the piers, all the holes for all the posts, we had a ton of rain come in. You can see in this picture here, I used a bunch of old plumbing pipe for a French drain to get the water away from the worksite area. After they drilled all the holes for the posts and the piers, I had to bring in a vector truck from work and extract all the water out of all the holes before they can pour all the concrete. It was one of the muddiest situations that you could think of. I made a jig, hooked it up to this vac truck. It was about a four inch diameter hose, approximately 120 feet long that I dragged around each and every single hole extracting all the water before the concrete was poured. Needless to say, it was a workout and I got extremely muddy doing it. The following day, I made sure I was on site. We ordered a six wheel drive concrete truck, but it still wasn't enough. Unfortunately, this truck here buried it up to the frame. We had to drag them out with a chain and a dozer. But once we got onto the right side of the pad, it was very much more solid. The following day, once all the concrete was poured is when I started setting the post. We chose to go with a laminated two by six post since the side of the building was so high and they were 16 foot high sides. The posts were laid out eight foot centers all the way out around the perimeter of the building. And on the back side of the building where the Dutch doors were for the horses, they were spaced out to be four foot on center for the Dutch doors and the exterior framing of the building. This is the end of the barn where there's a 12 foot by 60 foot overhang coming out into the pasture where there will be five Dutch doors going into five different stalls inside the barn for the horses. You can see in this picture where they have the purlings two foot on center, where it's gonna be the backing for the metal to screw into. The weather really started cooperating as far as precipitation, but unfortunately, this was late January of 2021 where the temperatures took a drastic drop. Now we're dealing with temperatures in the teens.
We're about four days into the construction of this building and the crane has arrived to set the trusses. Thankfully, it was a colder day, so the ground was frozen. This crane was about 80 some thousand pounds, so we were concerned about it sinking into the mud. We set the crane up inside the building, working from the inside out as we kept setting the trusses, working their way out of the building towards the exit of the construction site area. It took the crane about six hours to set all these trusses. They had guys down on the ground with rope stringers on the trusses trying to keep them from swinging. It was a little bit windy that day, but this crew worked very fast to get this done because they didn't want to get into a two-day cray rental. I have worked in a construction industry for over 20 years, and when you see a group of guys like this working as hard as they do, you learn to appreciate it. Once the trusses were installed, things started moving very quickly. You can see they have all the purlings up put all the soffit and face shop as the purlings and the trusses were being installed. The metal soon came on very, very quickly. They started on the roof and then started working down the sides, putting the metal on. The vertical pieces coming across the front, then tying it in. This is around the Dutch door area, so there's a little bit more detail in this area, putting the metal up. You can see on the left, they built a jig to put the metal on so it wouldn't crease when they picked it up with the forklift. Once all the metal and everything was on, the contractors left. Then we started doing all the preparation for the site work as far as utilities. We ran temporary power and electric into this building so we could eventually get permanent power. We appreciate you guys following along and supporting our channel through this journey. And like always, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.